everyone, welcome to my channel. If you're new, welcome, welcome. If you're a current subscriber to my channel, welcome back. I hope you enjoy today's video. Let's get started. Carefully planning this one and hopefully you enjoy it. So today's video will be a super quick video on a book that I currently read. I'll give you some background information. In my spare time, I love to read books, and this, especially in the summertime, I love to go outside, sit on my patio and read books. I can stay outside forever, pretty much, all day and read my book. Now I have a little one who is five months old, so for me to stay outside all day and just read a book and not do anything but that is kind of a challenge for me so when I get some downtime for an hour or two to read a book I definitely take it my best times I guess to read are first thing if I go outside around seven or eight when the weather is still nice it's not too hot it's not too cold and I can bring my little one out with me and she'll have a little nap in her baby move tent and I can read my book for a bit before she goes, before she has her next, I guess her next bottle and her, well, I guess her morning, her first morning nap. So the book that I recently read is called Girls of Paper and Fire. This book I discovered in the Owl Crate box, Owl Crate box, <coughs> which is a subscription box. For readers, I believe you get, if I remember correctly, you get two books in there as well as a few other um, little nicks and knacks. Like one time I got um, kind of like a book pencil case where you can hold, it's big enough you can hold your book in, so it's kind of neat. You can just put your book in there and then put in your bag so your book doesn't get all crumpled and stuff like that. Another time I got like a little tea bag holder for tea. Another uh, box subscription, they gave me socks, so like super comfy socks. And when you get Owl Crate, you can also get Owl Crate Junior for kids, I believe. I think it's 12, up to 12, 12 or 13, something like that. But some of those books are actually, I've looked and seen to see what previous books are and they're pretty good too but anyways so I discovered Girls of Paper and Fire by Nick Natasha Natasha Gann it is actually pronounced Nug I if I said that right I hope I did I meant to <laughs> look it up but I forgot to do that so anyways so I just want to give you kind of a quick um, little, I guess, synopsis, not really synopsis, but just kind of a, I don't want to give too much away about this book. So I want to kind of tell you what I took from this book and if I think you should pick it up or not. So first things first is... Um, I just want to talk about quickly. So the main character in this book, her name is Lee, and she's a paper cast. So that's like the lowest class in her in her little village or whatever. So I'm just gonna kind of give you information on that. I won't go too much into what a cast is because they do explain it in this book. So I'll kind of leave that as a oh my goodness, what is that for you? Uh, it's def it's a fantasy, so it's a fantasy book. If you like fantasy novels, fictional creatures, uh, creatures that, fantasy creatures, sorry, is what I meant to say, this is kind of a book for you. It's about um, fantasy and just creatures that are not real. So I just wanted to kind of quickly, so in the front right here, I wanted to quickly give you a little kind of idea of the book, but not give it away. 
So e each year, eight beautiful girls are chosen as paper girls to serve the kin. It's the highest honor they could hope for and the most demeaning this year. There's a ninth and instead of paper, she's made of fire. That's what I'm gonna tell you about that. So I will give a little bit of information about the author. So I'm just going to read this little part right here. So Natasha is a writer and yoga teacher. She grew up between Malasali, Malasia, where the Chinese side of her family is from, and the UK. This multicultural upbringing continues to influence her writing, and she is passionate about diverse story about bringing diverse stories to teens. Natasha studied geography at the University of Cambridge before working as a social media consultant and fashion blogger. She recently moved to Paris where she likes to imagine she drifts stylishly with her notepad in one hand, wine glass in the other. In reality, she spends most of her time getting lost on the metro and confusing locals with her French. So what else is, oh, so I wanted to give you, so before chapter one, there's kind of a little excerpt about the book. So I'll kind of, this kind of is what got me into the book. There is a tradition in our kingdom, one all castes of demon and human fo follow. We call it the birth blessing. It is such an old, deep rooted custom that it's said even our gods themselves practice it when they bore our race onto the earth. When babies die before their first year, there are whispers like leaves fluttering darkly on the wind. The ceremony was performed too late. The parents must have spoken during it. The shaman who executed the blessing was unskilled a fake. Coming from the lowest caste, paper caste, fully human, my parents had to save for the full nine months after a news of my mother's pregnancy. Though I've never seen a birth blessing ceremony, I've imagined my own so many times that it feels like a memory or some half remembered dream. Picture smoke cut night and darkness like a heavy black hand cupped round the world, crackling fire and standing before the flames, a shaman his leathery skin webbed with tattoos, teeth sharpened to wolf-like points. He's bent over the naked form of a newborn, just hours old. She's crying on the other side of the fire. Her parents watch in silence, hands clasped, clasped so tightly their knuckles are white. The shaman's eyes roll as he chants. painting its characters in the air with his fingers, where they hang above the baby and they glow in softly before fading away. As he comes to the crest of the prayer, a wind picks up. The grass stirs in a feathery rustle. Faster and faster, the shaman chants and louder and louder the rustle and the wind until the fire whips upward. A whirl of orange-red flame dances high in the sky before flashing suddenly out. Blackness, the starlit night. Then the shaman reaches into the air where the fire had been for the object floating in its wake, a small egg-like golden pendant. But the pendant isn't what's important. What's important is what the pendant hides within. The baby's fate. My fate. Our kingdom believes words have power, that the characters of our language can bless or curse a life. Inside the pendant is a single character. One word that we believe will reveal a person's true destiny and in my life will be blessed as my parents hoped when they saved me for my ceremony. 
or whether my fate is something far darker. Cursed years to be played out in fire and shadow. In six months, when I turn 18, the pendant will open and its answer will finally be revealed. So that's what I'm going to read to you about that. Now, I wanted to kind of give you my take on the book. So before I go into that, when I finished the book, I enjoyed the book. I couldn't put it down. And as soon as the way the book ended, I'm like, there has to be a sequel to the book. So I Googled and currently I have started to read Girls of Storm and Shadow, which is a sequel to Girls of Paper and Fire. So this is the one that I've already read and I can't wait to get into Girls of Storm and Shadow. So this is the book that I'm currently excited for. I can't wait to see what happens. So when I start a new book, usually the first chapter will has to draw my attention. If I'm not, in, after the first chapter, if I'm either not really sure what's, what the book about, who the characters are. I'm kind of confused if I have to go back and read the first chapter. The book's not for me. I love fantasy books and most fantasy books draw my attention. This book is one of those books that after I read the first two pages, I was automatically hooked. I couldn't put the book down. I had to keep on reading the book to see what happened. So even though this book is a fantasy fiction book, the author, Natasha, wrote this book to represent many women's experiences, including her own. What is that? I won't tell you. I'll let you read the book and read the, I guess, the end of the book where she tells you kind of what this book was about, how she came up with this idea, stuff like that. So... I'm going to leave you with this. Is this book worth the read? Yes. If you love fantasy and you love all those fantasy characters, this book is definitely will should be your next fantasy novel that you pick up. And once you read Girls of Paper and Fire and you find out how much you love this book like I did, you will want to go back and get Girls of Storm and Shadow. This will be my next book review, hopefully soon, because I want to read this book um, faster than I was able to read the other one. So I'm gonna give myself more time to read this book because I really wanna know what happens. So anyways, that's all I'm gonna give for that. Thank you so much for um, coming to watch my videos. If you're already subscribed to my channel, awesome. If not, and you love this video, give it a thumbs up. Please comment below your favorite novel. If you love fantasy like me, please comment below your favorite fantasy novel. I'd love to see some of your suggestions on good books to read that are fantasy. And also, if you have it already, please subscribe to my channel. It would be so awesome if you could subscribe. I would love it. It would be probably the best birthday gift ever. My birthday's in two weeks, so I would love if you subscribe to my channel. And thank you again. I will see you for the next video.